Welcome, welcome, welcome. I am running a little late. It's a minute behind 11, but I am here. Hey, Miss Mimi, perfectly. Thank you for joining. Thank you for joining night number 14 of 29 Days of Love. And I am your host with the most... Dr. Sabrina Jackson. I am the success broker and I am so excited. Hey, I'm for KSA. Thank you for joining. We are going to get right into this is night number 14 and I have promised every night for 29 nights we are going to go in on love. And you know, today is ending that wonderful day of Valentine's Day. I hope that your day was filled with love. And even if you don't have a significant other, you still could have a great day loving on yourself. So today I wanted to go right into a relationship uh, discussion because I have been seeing friends of mine getting married. I've seen um, just today, a friend of mine at a church, a visiting church, a very good friend of mine, uh, married a couple at her church. And I was just thinking about marriage and how oftentimes in the world, we prepare with excitement and enjoyment about the wedding day. Keep in mind that the real work happens after the wedding day so you put all this time and money and attention and all of that into preparing for the wedding and making the wedding day a great day and, and I want you to have a great wedding day however the real work comes with the marriage the real work comes in the commitment that goes into the relationship so tonight I want to talk about the work that relationships take it takes relationships take work and it's more than just love. I said that a couple of nights ago. It takes more than love to make your relationship work. So work is an acronym. And the W stands for willingness. You must have willingness. It is vitally important that you are willing to do what is necessary to make this relationship work. You must know that there's several things that you need to do, as well as your mate need to do, to make sure the relationship works. First, communication, communicating openly and honestly. Also, keep other folks out your business. Ooh, that's so good. Stop telling other people your business. Stop telling other people what's good and bad in your relationship. Work it out with your mate. Keep some sanctity between you and your mate. No one wants to hear their business out in the street. No one wants to go to the family gathering and everybody's looking at you all crazy because your mate done told all the business. And you know what happens. You get mad. You tell someone. They get mad because they love you. You forgive them or her. And then everybody else still mad at them. So make sure that you keep other folks out your business. Then don't bring old baggage from old relationships into the new relationships. It is so hard to do this, but this is something that you have to really spend some time really healing from those past hurts, really digging deep and finding out what's going on in you that's blocking you from having success in your relationship. And commit yourself that when you're trying to take the house that you came from and the house that your mate came from and fit it in one house that you're building together, that's not going to work. So you're going to have to create your own house. You create your own rules and routines and habits and rituals and everything. Create that for yourself. Don't bring that old baggage over into the new relationship. Also, listen, listen, listen with an open heart. See, what happens when we're in relationships and someone says something, we immediately go into rebuttal mode. But slow your roll and stop and listen. That's why you got two ears and one mouth. Listen with an open heart. Listen for clarity. Listen with empathy. Stopping to look at it from the other person's point of view. If you do that, you may find some success in your relationships. Understand that uh, you must treat your significant other with love and respect, loving kindness, benevolence, 
don't always jump to the conclusion that they meant to hurt your feelings. Don't jump to the conclusion that their behavior is designed to get up under your skin because our thinking creates our words and our words create our actions. So stop with thinking so negative all the time. Why not give the person the benefit of the doubt? Why not look at it from another perspective? Why not do that? You cannot you have to be willing. You must be willing to put in the work in the relationship. So you need to ask yourself when you're yoked up with someone, when you booed up with someone, ask yourself, am I willing to do what it takes to make this relationship work? So your old relationship, you might not have been willing to do that, but maybe you've grown and the other person is different. Ask yourself that very key question. Are you willing to put in the work. Hey, Nadine Johnson. How you doing, girl? Love those hearts. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The O in the acronym is opportunity. Who opportunity is good. 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 Hey, charming delights. Thank you for inviting others. Thank you. I want to talk about opportunity because when you get in a relationship, guess what? Opportunities are going to be coming your way. They're going to be flying your way and opportunities are going to be coming your way that may be very good for you, but may not be good for the relationship. So once you decide that you're going to be committed, that you're going to walk through this thing together with this person, you may have to turn down an opportunity. You may have to discuss the opportunity with your mate and see how it's going to be affecting us and not just me. See, the thing about relationships is once you decide to get in one, it's no longer just you. You have to think about it and how it's going to impact the relationship, the family, all of that. I know for me, I remember, and I, I'm always telling my stories, but I remember I had um, I had been separated from my, my ex-husband at that time for, for a long time, almost seven years. And we attempted to get back together, but I had gotten so used to doing things that I wanted to do the way I wanted to do them without asking for any... Um, support or just any I went all the way to Hawaii did not take my mouth my spouse and from Hawaii I just decided I'm not coming home I'm going to Houston I'm gonna hang out with my son did not even discuss it I got on a plane went from Hawaii to Houston and called him and said hey I'm in Houston I'm gonna be here for a couple of days I was completely totally 100% out of order Mm -hmm. I'm owning my own stuff. I was out of order because just because the opportunity came up for me, it might not have been good for my relationship, which wound up fizzling and I have to take some responsibility myself. So know that when opportunities come up in your relationship, you need to discuss them because now you're not just you, you're a part of a partnership. So you need to ask yourself, am I looking for opportunities that will benefit both of us and not just me? You need to ask yourself the question, ask yourself when the opportunities come up, is it an opportunity that's going to be a detriment to the relationship? Then R is responsibility. You are now, when you are, especially when you're married, you are now responsible for another one. <laughs> yes, I said responsible. Not like uh, the responsibility that you have of, of a parent or of a child. No, not like that. But responsible nonetheless. You must be concerned about your mate physically, socially, emotionally, financially, mentally, and spiritually. Make sure that you're doing things to pour good things into your mate in all of those areas. You have to be concerned about that. And that's your responsibility when you decide it's not just love. It is absolutely your responsibility to think about those things. And when you see that your mate is off uh, kilter, they're off their mark, they're not really flowing the way that you know that they can, that if you see your mate suffering in any area, it is your responsibility, one, to provide feedback and do it lovingly. Don't go off. Don't be mean. Don't be... 
you know, you have to learn how to say something sometimes. But you have to give feedback. Say, baby, you know, I can tell something's going on. Let me let me know what's going on. Let's talk about it. Let's have table talk. Let's let's get to the bottom of the matter because I care about you. Discuss the issue. Listen to their response and then work with them to create resolve. That is a powerful thing when you know that you're responsible. So ask yourself, am I ready to be responsible for another adult human being? Responsible for their health. Responsible for their welfare. Responsible to care about if they came home on time. All of that is responsibility in relationships. And that's why so many of our relationships fail because people don't realistically look at I'm going to have to tell somebody where I'm going, where I'm at, when I'm doing, where I'm who I'm with, all of that. You are responsible that person because you just are. You just are responsible and being responsible doesn't mean that you are smothering the person. You don't give the person the freedom to navigate their life. No, I'm not saying that. But you want to be respectful of the relationship. That's important. And then the last letter is the K. And K is knowledge. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. It takes some work. That means it takes some knowledge. There are so many things about this person, your mate, that you're married to, that you're yoked up with, that as you continue to grow and you continue to get older, you don't even know yet. As you continue to grow, people change. Their 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 likes change, their values change. And as you grow together, you have to be willing and open to dive into gaining new information and new knowledge about your mate. Knowledge is power. And you must seek out the knowledge necessary to make your relationship work, which may be totally different from your parents, from your friends, from your grandparents, from the people that you've watched their relationships. How is it gonna make it work with you and your mate? You have to be committed to going into going deep and finding out what's gonna make it work between you two. Because you ain't married to your parents. You ain't married to your friends. You're married to your mate. You're yoked up with the person that you're with. So really dive in and be open to finding out new information. And just because you don't know it or you don't understand it, don't mean you can't learn it. Doesn't mean you, you got to be have some openness to some new things. Move outside of your box of comfort. The type of person you are and the type of person that your mate is, that knowledge you must know. So it's important that you really find out how you're wired, why you do the things that you do, why you have the desires that you have, and find that and be open with your mate so that they can feel open and share what's going on with them. So it's important that you absolutely know who you're dealing with. All people are different. They come with different experiences. They come with different perceptions. They come with different uh, backgrounds. They come with different cultures. They come with different value systems. They come with different understanding. They come with differences all day long. And those differences can cause conflict. However, if you're committed to being open and honest and learning about how to make this thing work. Take a workshop, read a book, go and listen to someone talk about their successes and their failures. Be responsible enough to say that, you know what, I don't know everything about this thing we call love and this thing we call relationships. So I'm going to dive in and I'm going to get some information. I'm going to get some knowledge. And so you need to ask yourself, do I really know how I am wired and why I do the things that I do and I'm willing to learn how my mate is wired so that I can help them be a better them which will then in turn help me be a better me and then we can be the best we that we can have. Thank you for those hearts. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So remember, as you're diving into relationships, if you're already in a relationship, if you're going into a new relationship, if you're seeking a relationship, if you ain't even seeking one and one show up, God send you somebody, know that it's work. Work is willingness. You got to be willing to put in the work. Oh, opportunities. The opportunities that show up may not be the best for the relationship are you're responsible for someone else's well-being and their life and their love. And then the next K is knowledge. 
Knowledge is power. Get some knowledge. Get some understanding. Learn something new so that you can be the best you that you can be and the best relationship when you put in the work. 